This episode of iFanboy is brought to you by Squarespace, graphic audio, a movie in your mind, and GoDaddy. So where is Ron? Uh, he's off writing the voicemails and then getting people to call in. Oh, shit. <laughs> To iFanboy, the podcast on the comic book discussion site iFanboy.com. My name is Connor. I'm here with. I'm Josh. And I'm Ron. And uh, here we are in the midst of fall. We thought it was a good time to dip into the voicemail. We got a lot of backlog over the summer. So, um, how it works is you call our voicemail line at 1888 Fanboys. That's 1888 326 2697. Leave a message, keep it brief, and then we play it here and talk about it. So with no prep. No prep. Right? This is completely unfiltered. So, we're going to dive right in with our first one. All right. And I just have to press play. <laughs> hey, it's Jeff from Texas. Uh, I just picked up the um, the first two parts of the Brainiac uh, arc on uh, Action Comics, and I can't thank you guys enough for recommending this book. Uh, I haven't had a Superman comic book in my pull list since the death and return of Superman, and I'm so glad that someone's actually writing Superman and making me care about these characters and, uh, and the world that he lives in. And it's just, it's awesome. I love it. Thank you, guys. Was, was that no. a question? I don't, I don't know if there was, was, a, was a question in there. It was more of a thank you. Um, but he's talking about Action Comics, uh, Jeff Johns right in. Uh, First of all, 15, that was 15 years ago that Superman died. Yes, it was. That was a long time. What a few, 91? It was 93. 90, yes, yes. <clears throat> I feel old. That feels was very old. Yeah. Fifteen. I'm not years re- ago. reading it now, but you it's like very, it. Very, very good. I, I'm. He's reading. It. I'm reading it. Yeah, that's and that's it, uh, huge. It is good. Yeah. It's Jeff Johns. Yeah. Brainiac's this character who's been around forever, and and you're like, oh, what else can they do with him? Brainiac's really interesting. Like he's come <laughs> up with a new thing for him, which doesn't uh, go against what was set before, but is also new and interesting. Yeah. It's very good. It's, it's, very it's good. amazing. It's making you happy. I mean, yeah, no, it's, it's a great. It's a great book. I mean, it's just. Yeah. It, mm-hmm. Jeff Johns is probably should be paying us. <laughs> he probably should at this point. <laughs> oh, you guys haven't gotten your. <laughs> oh. oh. <laughs> All right, let's I get a stipend. <laughs> nice. <laughs> About let's eight bucks a week. Go into the next one here. All right. Hey guys, this is Chris from Seattle. You know, Batman movies got me to wondering. We know a lot about Batman's dad. He was a surgeon. You know, he was a Wayne and all that. What do we know about Batman's mom? I mean, it seems like whenever Bruce mentions his parents, it's, you know, or you get a flashback, it's always him and his dad. Is there, you know, is there any ever flashback with Bruce and his mom? Do we know, you know, what her maiden name is? Do we know, do we know anything about her, really? Anyway. All right. Talk to you later, boys. Good question. Don't you go exposing the patriarchal underbelly of comics <laughs> where the women named Martha just don't really matter. We don't, we don't know anything, or hardly anything about her beyond that, beyond Martha. That she just, she wore pearls. I know that. Yeah. <laughs> that's, and her name is that's, Martha. That's sort of superficial. Right, yeah. Is Martha Wayne? Is Martha, Martha Wayne, yeah. Martha. I, I mean, isn't that, isn't yes. that, oh, Super, yes. yeah, Superman's mother's name, too. Well, in the, in the 30s, 40s, probably Martha, a very popular yeah. Martha name. Martha was a very it was, motherly name. Yeah. It was like Madison now. Which is the common name. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think it was motherly back then. A motherly, yeah. oh, okay. So, like, yeah, yeah. Madison. Jennifer right. unless, would yeah. be Jennifer. the popular name. Exactly. Yeah. Like uh, Sarah. Go to the mall and just there's yell pro- Jennifer. There's probably a, a Martha Wayne story. I'm sure in, in the 80 years of comics there's been a few. Have you, have you read one? I can't think of anything about her. Maybe nobody has. Ooh. She's the Aunt Baru of the DC universe. <laughs> <laughs> Look! The thing is, they, they never really... And explore the parents a lot because they're not really important. I mean, they are, but they are. They're important. What and how they died and not. Right. Well, in the first Batman movie, his father had was was, was not right. prominent, but no, was no. featured. And that was you know. unusual. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that was not. So we don't normally get anything involving the parents. Right. You know, it's, what's funny is that that seems like a rich vein of stories that somebody Jeff Johns could. <laughs> Explore. Has Jeff Johns really written a, a lot no, about? He's, he's not, not a bad. No, guy. I just uh, he's not a bad. Yes, not necessarily, him, but there, there seems like yeah. Bruce was old enough. When they died, that he would have had enough Ooh, memorable experiences yeah. with them. So you could tell stories, you could tell flashback stories that shaped his character, but they're not going to be like 
It's going to be, she was philip, ph- philanthropic, philanthropic. She sat on boards. She went to museum openings. Well, that's I mean, why but, you're yeah. not writing Batman's story. <laughs> oh, it, would, it, would, it would only be boring. There's no, there's no story to be gotten out of that. Let's, let's just skip it. No, but really, there is a, there is a male bias. Yeah. Mm. I mean, there's always the parent. Of the yeah. father when they're talking about Yeah, the I mean, well, think, think of DC's got a bad history of this. I mean, if you yeah. think about it, like, Iris, she was not nice to, to very. Oh, early on. That's early. No, no. She, I mean, she, that's. Even well, that's because you've been listening to Tom vs. the Flash. Right, it's no, all the like, Silver Age stuff. But, but no, that, in the 70s, but, and, and it changed. But yeah. no, but it keeps going if you yeah. think about it. Well, there was the historic misogyny in DC in the 50s no, and 60s. Well, that's what I'm saying. And, and uh, <laughs> there are others, and it just, you know, the granny goodness is evil. Well, yeah, yeah, the, and, yeah. And I don't know. There's lots of. And now Marvel's misogynist. Yeah, with all their with all their lady. Um, Marvel's no, not misogynist. It's, it's villain. <laughs> we just want to get that across. <laughs> um, it's a joke. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Um, let's do our next one here. Hey guys, this is Juan from Fullerton, California. This is my first time calling, and I was just going over some of your old podcasts, and I was curious as to why Connor hates Gambit so much. Uh, me growing up, my only exposure to X-Men was really the cartoons, and I remember loving Gambit. And I have a lot of friends who actually ended up loving Gambit as a favorite character, too. So I was just uh, wondering, why so much hate? All right, thanks again. Uh, love the show, guys. All right, thanks. Why do you hate Gambit? Wait, what we have here is another example of, of the binary states of comic bookness. Love or hate. Right, true. Connor doesn't hate Gambit. I no, hate he, Gambit. No, he hates oh, him. Yeah, yeah, he does. But, I mean, like, but you think you don't care? Do you? I don't care. I don't, like, I I don't, don't sit there simmering about Gambit. But when he shows up, I don't want to. Talk. I don't want to. Why? Hate what? Him, what? Because do like he's stupid. He doesn't serve any purpose, and and he only does is he he's his, he's got that nebulous like our writer Jim the nebulous '90s energy power that doesn't serve any purpose. No, no, that's not true. I mean, yeah, he, he just he, he can charge uh, no, not, the kinetic energy and throw it. Right, but yeah. it's, he, it's it's stupid. It's, I'm gonna pick up a thing and charge it. It's yeah. stupid. He also when he first when he first came out, he's he also, whiny. No, stop, he's, stop, stop, stop. He's, he's, his, when he first started, his powers, he also had like there was a glimmer of like a persuasion power, which they just abandoned, which, yeah. which was really good. His character was a lot better when Claremont started writing him, and then Lobdell ruined him in the '90s with the whole rogue and him. They just yeah. beat that to, like a dead horse. That was that was and, just annoying. And then they and then recently they made it. He got sucked in by Apocalypse, and then he just appeared like Gambit. You're better, and he's like, yeah, don't ask, and they just moved on. There really is yeah. a generation gap though, because yeah. if you grew up, if you the are cartoon, eight to ten years younger than us, yeah. And you grew up watching that cartoon. You love that kid. My brother is eight years yeah. younger than me, and like Gambit is the best thing ever. He has yeah. a stick. Well, he was cool. He's got the <laughs> hair, and he's got the thing. Anyway, that was yeah. a, his, the '90s. The, the, the costume that was dumb, and the jacket, and the spiky hair. And it was just yeah. the, oh, nothing good about Gambit. There's nothing good about Gambit. Right, I take it back. He does. I I don't hate him, but I don't care yeah. at all. He's like Cable to me. Like, well, that's I, I hate Cable equally as much as Gambit. Is there any characters you just don't care about? Who don't about, you don't hate? Maybe you are binary. Maybe you are no, that. No, guy. No. The hate is that I don't want anything to do with them. Uh-huh. Right. I don't, like I said, I don't care. Like I hate the Sentry actively, but I, I passively hate Gambit. And, mm-hmm. and right, it's not, it's not a view. Yeah. All right, well, before we get to our next voicemail, let's uh, take a break from our, hear from our sponsors. Graphic audio is a unique audio entertainment experience that features a full cast of actors, sound effects, and cinematic music that creates a movie in your mind. Graphic Audio has published over 350 action adventures and science fiction titles, including the recently released DC Comics, The Flash, Stop Motion. Upcoming DC Comics releases include Wonder Woman Mythos and the Green Lantern Heroes Quest. Go to graphicaudio.net, type in iFanboy into the coupon code when you purchase CDs or MP3 CDs and receive 40% off your first total purchase at graphicaudio.net. Alright, we have more, so let us not waste time. Not wasting time at all. Don't get hurry! I'm sorry! I would like to not have one be about me. (laughs) Okay. Three in a row. I don't know what this one's about. It says something. Hello, iFanboy. My name's Jerry. I've been reading Incredible Hercules since the first issue. I read it and read it and read it, and it was so awful, I finally dropped Incredible Hercules. Yet every month, readers keep saying, Buy Incredible Hercules! It's the best comic out there! Read Incredible Hercules, not that other comic! Incredible Hercules is the best comic there is! Now I'm shocked by this. The art was horrible, the storytelling was hard to understand, and the characters and ideas were just all around boring and not worth it. Please tell me, what is the deal with Incredible Hercules? Do you think that was really him? 
Well, it doesn't sound anything like it. <laughs> not, not a bit. So, it's, oh, it's a bit, all right. <laughs> so, but seriously, um, so Incredible Hercules is was uh, the renamed Incredible Hulk book that's now starring Hercules. Um, Greg Pak and Fred Van Lente are co-writing it, and I don't know who's on. I couldn't even tell you who's on the art. It's, um, the, it's the characters a, from. World War Hulk. Yeah, it's like the post World War Hulk book. <laughs> but the guy, and during the World War Hulk, these char- these side characters st- started taking over the Hulk book. It was Hercules and Angel and. Well, no, Angel was but briefly. In during yeah, no, in during, during the Hulk, book, yeah. And, and then there was Amadeus Cho. Yeah, that guy. And like, now with the, with the kid, Hercules like, and the Cho. Puppy. I yeah. literally don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. And it's awesome. Well, what's funny? What's funny is that what it, what it, and what the caller, what Jerry brings up is that we get a lot of feedback talking about how great this book is and how you know people should check it out and but it's interesting to hear somebody saying that it's not so great so it's i mean just first, show, first know, person i've heard say that yeah honestly me too but um it sounds to me like it depends on what sort of yeah. marvel reader you are right i'm guessing that no matter how great somebody tells me it's going to be it might in fact be great it's probably not my cup of tea right i'm just just uh, you know i gotta go on my instinct here um, but I don't have anything to base that on. So. <laughs> just pure gut. And just pure it's, I, you know what? I've developed a bit of gut instinct. I can, I can you know, no. Yeah. Well, some people really love it. I just, I can't. And I've been like, you know, people, people are recommending I should check it out, and I just can't. I don't know why. It's not even, it's not even a gut instinct thing. It's just like always, like when it comes out, it's a big week, or I forget, or like, it's, and I don't want to jump on. Just don't really want to. No, I don't. I don't and, think and I do. I, don't know I why feel obligated. Yeah. Yeah. There's so. lots of books like this. Yeah. Really. Yeah. I just don't want to. I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah. All right. Here's our next one. Hi, this is Jeff in Seattle. Hey, I want to say I love the show. I've been listening for a couple months now. Um, uh, here's a question for you guys. Uh, who has the greater fortune, uh, the larger fortune, Tony Stark or Bruce Wayne? And as a follow-up, who would uh, win in a battle? That's it. <laughs> Thanks again. You guys are doing a great job. Thanks. Bye. First, I thought he was asking us about our <laughs> network. <laughs> Which of you has the greater fortune? I'm gonna, abs- I'm gonna abstain. Thank you. And then abscond. So, so who has more money? Who the hell knows? It's all fictional money. Yeah, but I don't know. I feel like Stark does. Stark probably does. Yeah. Mm. I feel like Stark's got a more of a Microsoftian feel. Well, well Wayne's Stark, got more of a Rockefeller feel. You know? Stark is is working is currently producing money. Whereas I feel right. like Bruce is working from a legacy fund. No, no, he's money he, that makes he, the he, Wayne he's, Enterprise. He's, a, he's, a, yeah. he's the same as Stark. He, he makes stuff for the yeah, government. But, he makes weapons and technology for the weapons? government. He makes non. He makes technology for the but government. But see, think about like Stark. Stark Tech is yeah. in everything. everything. No, I think everything. So. And so like the, I think they're a bigger company. Yeah. If you were to look at it that way. Yeah. But they all he has a higher burn rate. Like his suit's more expensive. <laughs> he's got a higher burn rate. It's true. <laughs> It's true. <laughs> no, but Bruce has got the bat plane and it blows up every time he uses it. And he doesn't like, use it that often. But when he does, it blows up and then you got to replace but it. Think about it. Stark is wearing oh. a bat plane every time. <laughs> I know, it always gets dinged. Kevlar vest, nothing <laughs> compared to that. Also, you think of that Wayne's old money. Yeah. You know, old Well, money. Stark is new money. Whereas old money, there's often a lot of it. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, but I wonder and at some point... He's though, got all the real estate in Gotham, which... Uh, yeah, sure. He owns, like, half of Gotham. And if yeah, you but yeah. Well, Stark if you doesn't own... own but that's you own half of Manhattan. We know that. Yeah. Well, yeah, sure, yeah. We, but, but we never, then we're only going by what we know. That's right. the thing. It's true, but... What we know he's got. But the thing is, is that, that, that he's got, you know, that's just money on paper. You can't say, I own half of Gotham, give me money to buy new cows. Yes, you can. That's, yes, you how, can. that's, that's how it works. That's how... Is he balanced? Is Wayne got... Uh, Does no. Alfred take care of all that too? No, I don't no. think so. Lucius, 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 Lucius. yeah. Um, shoot that motherfucker. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, um, that is not Lucius. Um, uh, but the more important question is who wins, who wins in a fight? Well, Batman would shut the armor down somehow. <laughs> because Batman finds a way. Yeah. <laughs> Amp. Yeah, Amp. Yeah, exactly. Really? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Amp, Amp takes nano nanotechnology. <laughs> Nanotech. <Then> pop. Yeah. <laughs> Boop. Pop. <laughs> All right. Um, it's got, proof that a man with a punch <laughs> can solve the world's problems. All right, we got a couple more, but a quick word from our sponsors. iFanboy would like to thank Squarespace.com for sponsoring this episode. If you ever wanted to build a complex high-end website but you don't know a thing about coding, Squarespace has the tools for you. You can build websites with high-end functionality and all sorts of complex stuff on them using their tools. Whether you have a large, powerful business or you just want to build a real nice blog, Squarespace has got what you need. They give everyone the opportunity to build pages that are just as powerful and flexible as those of the big dog. Keep an eye out for some pages that Squarespace is going to be building for us. Hey there, true believers. Don't miss the GoDaddy.com holiday shopping spree. Between now and December 15th, every purchase of $50 or more qualifies you automatically for a chance to win a $1,000 cash prize. 
Visit GoDaddy.com today and use the coupon code IFANBOY to save 10% off all of your purchases at GoDaddy.com, where .com names are still as low as $199, plus world-class hosting, fast and easy website builders, and much more from GoDaddy. All right, let's power through. Are we going to power, power through? Power. Yeah, wicked sweet. Hey, guys, how's it going? This is Dave calling you from Denver, Colorado. I um, was watching the mini podcast on Tim Sale today, and you guys referred to the fact that he's actually colorblind. Um, and I'm colorblind as well, and I've always thought that maybe that's a reason that I really like comics and that it's all black and white. Um, so I was just wondering if any of you guys are colorblind, and I'm also kind of curious as to you know, the, the people on the iFan base or the people who you know, read a lot of comics, how many of them are, are colorblind? Because I know that it's mostly men that are colorblind and never happens to women, just like male pattern baldness or something. Um, so maybe that's the reason so many men like comics as well. I don't know. So I did not know that. It only is he happens from to men. Brooklyn or Denver? He says Denver. He maybe is a transplant. I don't believe he's a native Denver. <laughs> Denverite. Oh, Denverite. Yeah. Huh. Why is this show about me? I really. This is the Connor theme show. <laughs> I feel like I'm under attack. Well, <laughs> he didn't know it was about you. I'm slightly colorblind. Yes. And also <clears throat> apparently dying. <laughs> Colorblindness is is a spectrum. There's there's degrees of it. You know like I mean? color itself. Right. So people think colorblind. They think you see in black and white like Tim Sale does. But right. that's that's like severe. Does as well. Or that yeah. guy we met yeah. at that one dinner party one time. Yep. Is that yeah. Severe that severe colorblindness crazy. where you can't yeah. you can't distinguish color at all. Um, I have a can slight. I tell, can I tell you can story? tell in a second. Right. I have slight colorblindness where sometimes hues I can't distinguish hues. Like it was a big problem. I saw so Hugh Laurie and Hugh Grant Hugh were standing there. <laughs> you can't tell the One guy's like, and the other guy's like, uh, uh, uh. <laughs> looking all the time. No, wait, 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 were you in Notting Hill? What's going on? No. Um, when I was in high school, and I used to paint a lot. I, I'd have trouble when clothes would mix, and suddenly they would all just look the same, and I couldn't distinguish them. Oh, wow. But um, and it's a brain thing. If someone t- tells me, "Hey, that's green," it'll Click in. into place. But. Oh, weird. We, we were at a dinner party. We met a guy who was colorblind, and um, he was so severely colorblind. We were talking about how he lived day to day and like how he shops for clothes. And he says he goes into the Banana Republic or the Gap and walks, finds a salesperson, walks up to a mannequin, and just goes, yeah, I'll take that. And has them put that whole outfit in a bag, and then he keeps that outfit together, and he knows that it's a matching outfit. I was like, that's so fascinating. She has that's bags it. of outfits. I get. I don't know. Imagine like this big closet, like you know. <laughs> okay. Like, what do you do is laundry though. One outfit at a time. Uh, yeah, that I guess is wasteful. Yeah. Yeah, well, but you could write. The, you could write a little number on the tag. Yeah. yeah on each maybe. thing and put those together. Anyway, wow. This is um, shirt number but one. But is it? It only happens to men. I didn't know that. I, I don't know about that, but. Oh. So do it you is, not appreciate is, the genius of of Dave Stewart? No, I do. It's 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 not it's complex, and I actually haven't had a problem. In a while, yeah, that's it was it was worse when I was younger. Maybe Maybe something you, or you've you, learned or whatever. Yeah, I had lo- I had a pair of shoes for a long time. I thought were were black. They were blue. <laughs> oh, that's uh, I can. Oh, I remember that. that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. Well, <laughs> here's our last voicemail. What's it going to be about me? Hey, this is Becca from Kentucky. Um, I just want to say I've been watching a lot of my fanboy. I love comic books. I grew up loving comic books, and um, I was watching the mini on comic book villains. Uh, Punk time, hoping to rush up for my speech class, and um, I definitely have to agree with Josh. You know, I'm definitely more terrified of DC villains than I am of Marvel. You know, I love Marvel heroes, but I think DC villains could kick Marvel heroes' ass. But you know, guys, thanks for the show. Thanks for the podcast. Um, it's great to have something to tune into every week, and um, really appreciate it. Yeah, I need a girl on the show, though. Definitely. Um, it'll be cool. All right, later. Thank you. Thank you for appreciating it. Um, I think she's auditioning. Maybe. She's referring to a previous episode uh, of iFanboy that was all about villains, where we discussed it. <laughs> um, and Josh saying DC villains are more terrifying, like the Joker. But I don't know. That, that, they should do a crossover where the villains fight. Because I don't, I mean. Look at you with the pitches today. Yeah, I know. I'm full of ideas. Except oh, that wouldn't work. <laughs> you, couldn't, you couldn't do it. The um, the, the I don't think the, the DC villains would kick the Marvel villains' ass as so as so Who quickly. Who beats Darkseid? No one. Galactus. He's not a villain, according to you. Oh yeah, sure, that's a good point. Yeah, <laughs> he's a, just hungry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. That I agree question. with. Yeah. he's not. He's just hungry. Yeah, thank you. So he's not a villain. Are we villains yeah. to bacteria? Yeah. See. 
Uh, are we, wait. Are we villains to bacteria? I see what you're saying. Or to cows? Sort of. I or mean, cows. we're predators. Or the cows like those fuckers. We're not actively, well, we, we can cows think that way. Right, bacteria. Just go. bacteria we are. We actively, we actively kill bacteria. Grass. Galactus is a different story. He's, it's more like Thanos versus dark side. Yeah. Thanos who's is the, Thanos. Yeah, Thanos like, is dark side. Who's the, like, is Thanos a dark side rebuff? A little bit. Yeah, similar. a little bit, yeah. Thanos is dark side. Or, or Annihilus. Annihilus. How old is Thanos? Is he, was he 17. Created? 47. No, no. no, was he created yeah. in the 90s? In the 70s. Oh, in the 70s, 70s yeah. Because dark side was created in the... the 70s. The fourth world stuff. 70s, yeah. Kirby, yeah. Kirby yeah. probably created both of them, quite honestly. No, I don't think so. I don't think he created <laughs> Thanos. But um, I, think there, I think there are a lot of matchups, like, like also with the, he- with the heroes. I think that maybe the DC villains are a little more crazy, a little more ruthless. Right. But I think that the Marvel... Like, the DC villains seem to be more hell-bent on... On revenge and on things, you know, things like that. While the Marvel villains, the good ones, are hell bent on like world domination, and I feel like that kind of trumps. Well, that. different kinds. Right. You know, Doom, yeah. Doom would want, he wants to rule everything, or fascism for the Red Skull. Yeah. Whereas, well, that's just what that's what Darkseid wants. Who's bigger? Is there anybody more scary than Darkseid? No. 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 He wins, I think, in the DC. I think Thanos gives him a run for his money. I'm not scared of Thanos. Like Thanos no, is kind Thanos, of goofy. He's got Thanos, a goofy costume. Don't forget yeah. that Thanos was a bitch. Yeah, sure. Thanos like like was a bitch. like Mephisto kind of, and, yeah. and he was all he and was, Death's a bitch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But dark dark side, you it's don't really. Point. It's all about dark side. Dark side um, is <laughs> evil wins. All right, so if you have a question that you're dying to have us answer, you can call us on our fa- voicemail line at one eight 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 fanboys. It's one eight 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 three two six two six nine seven. Keep it brief, about thirty seconds, and be sure to give us your name, and maybe you'll get on a future show. If you don't have any snappy impersonations, also actually just don't bother with that. Uh, if you you can also email into contact at ifanboy which is another effective way of communicating. Yes, I prefer some of them not centering around me. <laughs> next Focus time. less on Connor <laughs> next time. Next time. I wasn't prepared for this. I was going to take this one easy. How did, how did you get such dreamy eyes? I don't know. The stars came down into them. That's what I was going to say. <laughs> you can and you have two fine ham stuffed in your pants. <laughs> you can discuss this episode at ifanboy.com. There'll be a post about it. You can talk about all the things we talked about with no prep whatsoever, so it's possible we got some, some facts wrong. And you can also talk about it at revision3.com slash ifanboy where you can find more shows like this one. Hundreds. Yes. Hundred tons. Thank Many. you for watching. You love saying when we get stuff wrong. Admit it. You love it. We're gonna put a girl right here. <laughs> Sitting on the wire. Way down in the hole. I didn't realize that was Steve Real playing the junkie. Yes. He's awesome. Yes. He was awesome. And he also sang the theme song once. One, one, one of the seasons, yeah. Yeah, the Death Cab for Cutie version never quite made it. <laughs> they were all good in their merits. Yeah, they were. But some were better than others. First season was my favorite. Yeah.